this is the, the Volcano 2 um, stove. What's really cool about this, as you can see, it's only five inches when it's it's um when it's folded down. And uh, this thing is so insulated that you can actually use this thing on a plastic table um, with a tablecloth on it. It's very easy to set up. You uh, pull the handle out and lift. And then it sets itself up. So as you can see now, there's um, there's a there's a dampering system that allows you to open and close and control the heat. This thing is a, a tri-fuel stove. It runs off of um, gas or propane, um, charcoal, or wood. We're gonna try wood. I've never done this before, so I guess we'll see what happens. You have to um, have the grate in the bottom, or else it will not. Um, it, you could damage the grill. I am going to attempt to use. Um, I'm going to attempt to use a fire chimney. Um, and I've never. I'm not using charcoal lighter. I'm going to see if I can do this without charcoal lighter. Um, this could horribly fail, or it could um, or just work out. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to put some paper on the bottom and cover it with. Um, the chimney. Inside the chimney there's only 20 charcoals total and this is probably too much. And then what I did is I put some popsicle sticks on the bottom to try to get the heat up and some cardboard. Again, I've never I've never started a grill without um, charcoal lighter fluid so I guess we'll see what happens. So let's Start the fire and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Again, I don't know if paper is the best thing to do here. I don't know if we actually have a fire going or not. It's hard to tell. I see a little bit of fire. Um, so we're going to let that start and then we'll come back and and see in a couple minutes how well it works. But um, again, this is the Volcano 2 um, outdoor stove, tri-fuel. We're gonna try it with charcoal. And then um, we're gonna use a Dutch oven. We're gonna cook a pot roast. Okay, we seem to have a really good fire here. So it's without charcoal water. I had to add a couple more um, popsicle sticks and I put a, broke up some of the bamboo I was using for the garden in the summer to really get this thing going. The flames are, are pretty darn hot. Looks like we're going to successfully be able to do this without charcoal lighter fluid. Um, I have a charcoal lighter fluid as a backup, but we're not going to need it. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. The coals are now gray. We have our Dutch oven over here. And we're going to be cooking some pot roast. Onions, garlic. Man, it already smells good. Onions, garlic, and so forth. This is not... I think if you were to buy a um, Dutch oven, you'd probably want the one that's designed to have... It has, like, the flat lid and has the, the, ha um, the little feet. Um, this one's still technically designed to go over a fire. It's just the lid's not doesn't have the 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 other one has the curve going the other way, so it's designed to hold the coals. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the coals, we're going to dump them out, and then what you want to do with the Dutch oven here is you want to move the coals to the outside. Um, and then we need a couple of these for the top. So we're going to take some of these without burning ourselves. We're going to take those. And then, you know, like I said, you're going to take, you need, you need like 12, you need like 12 charcoals and you, you want them on the outside. They say for each each charcoal, each briquette adds 25 degrees. This thing is absolutely intense heat right now. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, we have right around 12. And then we're gonna close the, we're gonna close this a little bit so until we can figure out where it's at. We're gonna, we're gonna do it like in the middle. And what's cool about this is it's designed to hold the 
Dutch oven right in the middle. And if that wasn't cool enough, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put we're gonna put the coals on top. And the one thing I don't have yet, which is gonna be a challenge when I go to do this, is I don't have the official cast iron um, lid support. Alright, so these go on top, the other ones go on the bottom. Um, there's a lot of heat coming off, but on the side here, there's a sticker. It's um, it's warm to the touch, but underneath there's absolutely no heat. And then what we have is we have the optional lid. So what this does is it creates um, it creates a little oven. So we're gonna check back with this in about a half hour. See what the temperature is. Optionally, it would have been nice if I had um. It would have been nice if I had my um, my oven thermometer, so we're gonna have to check this in a half hour. I want to see maybe my laser, maybe my laser will tell the temperature. I don't know. If you had a smaller um, Dutch oven, you could use the. If there's a diffuser plate that comes with the device, and this would actually sit inside the inside the volcano first. There's oil on it, so I don't want to pull it out. Um, so this would go on, there's a there's a shelf inside the actual unit, the charcoal would be on the bottom, then this would be down, then your Dutch oven can sit on top of this, but our Dutch oven just happens to sit, this is hot, it's not hot to the touch, but you know they claim it's hot, so we'll check back in an hour. Okay, we've been cooking for, for just about an hour, we're going to see if the laser detector is able to pick anything up. Saying 164 coming out of the on the top. Let's just see if it can pick anything up here. Hi. 261, so there must be not really sure what the limit is here. So the outside temperature surface is 129 degrees, so it stays pretty cool to the touch. The pan is somewhere around two something, but I'm not really sure what. Uh, Sorry. All right, so we're gonna carefully try to, we're gonna lift this up. See how the coals look underneath. Man, it's heavy. The coals underneath, they're still looking pretty good. Now, let's see how these are looking. Now these are still pretty, yeah. Yes, they are breaking down. Let's see what this thing looks like inside. I don't. Oh yeah, look at that. So it is working. And uh, might have to start some more coal soon. I don't know. I have to check it. Okay, it's been almost another hour. Um, I'm almost at the close state. What I've realized now is about every 45 minutes to an hour, you need to have another set of coals going. So I started another set of coals um, after the last video because there was no boiling. Um, it was still hot, but the coals at the bottom were totally, totally um, spent. So let's see where we're at after two hours. Oh yeah, yeah, we're rolling here. I don't know, I gotta check and see where the beep is at. But you can see we're at a roaring boil. And I don't know. We'll look in here and see where the state of the coals are. Yeah, so these, these coals, if this isn't done, I need to start another set. Cause these are pretty much almost spent. So like I said, about every hour you're going to have to change the coals if you're going to have to cook for an extended period of time. I'm about to stir this, check the meat, and, uh, and it might be time to eat. Well, it's about two and a half hours. I put another um, eight coals on. And... It's 
spoiling away. I don't know if it's done done, but it's it's almost 7:30, so we're gonna we're gonna eat. I don't know if you can hear that, but it sure smells good. The whole neighborhood smells good. And uh, that's the volcano too. Again, you know the outside is absolutely cool to touch. It might be warm up here. Um, yeah, a little bit. But uh, so far, so good.